excited to uh, catch up with uh, Greta today. How did you get into roofing? I got into roofing by mistake. It was supposed to be a summer job. And then as I became a project manager, then I said to myself, well, can I do something different? Can I create a company? Is it doable for a woman? And with no but being an Albanian immigrant, being an only child, meant that I didn't have any referral opportunities or much network. Was there anything in your childhood that indicated that you were you were, you know, entrepreneurial or or willing to take chances? I think looking back at myself, I was the kid in class that everybody volunteered uh, to be the presenter of the project. I really thought that entrepreneurship was for me when I joined a college classroom. Being in a college classroom and having a professor really push those boundaries um was a, a turning point for me what were the first months or years like horrible horror i have like looking back at myself sometimes i just joke i say how did i survive you have to be in it for the long run and you have to be able to have a, a lot of conversations of doubt with yourself had i not hung around for year one two three i wouldn't be here today i feel like i always have to prove my worth to a lot of people um so i knew that quitting was not an option for me i think i had a lot of motivators and drivers that pushed me through those one, two, three. And I think if you are an entrepreneur, you really got to find those drivers. You mentioned from 18 to 22, you were going through some stuff. What was that like? It was a period of time where I had everything planned out. I wanted to go to law school and then I became a mother. For me, it was putting up a lot of dreams on hold. It was saying goodbye to a lot of friends and activities and hobbies and passions. And I always tell people that I think roofing saved my life. You know, I think it was an industry that welcomed me. What were yeah. your early learnings that helped you sort of propel yourself to a more stable and uh, successful path? What I learned really on is that I had a lot more strength than I knew I did and that I was my biggest um, enemy. I think uh, a lot of times we are our biggest enemies because we want gratification. I was spending so much of my energy trying to get um, affirmation and just, you know, thumbs up from people in my circle. And I think for, for some of people, that's great that they have that. But I didn't. The other key thing that I learned is that success looks very different. Um, for a lot of people. And in my year one to three, I wanted my success to mirror the people that I thought were successful. But I believe it was like around year two and a half that I stopped looking what my competitors were doing. I stopped even checking up on them. And then I would, I would just say, I'm going to create a marketing approach that's going to be mine. You know, I'm going to create a sales approach and it's going to be mine. Looking back is that ego. Um, having ego in business is a great thing, but it's also a deadly thing because sometimes we want to prove to the world that we can do it on our own. And I think looking back at myself, maybe I should have um, brought in a partner and given away some percentage. If you can find somebody you trust and you can let down your ego a little bit and not have to prove to the world that you can do it and maybe welcome somebody else on the ride, I think you can buy time and you can essentially get to your goal faster. Explain to people what drove you to want to do this and well, what it is as well. I constantly kept uh, being called on podcasts and to speak and people wanted to know just the story and I was able to give a lot of inspiration, but inspiration sometimes is just like a fairy dust, it comes and goes. So I said, what if we were give, what if we gave people a little bit more? What if we gave them inspiration? They said, what if we can create a blueprint with my voice, my story, but the research of my industry, and we can hand it out to people and really change maybe some fact versus fiction that they have for my industry. And that's when the idea to create a platform that would have education, courses, events, and experts came to mind. The platform is called Rootless because it gives you the idea that um, we can be rootless, right? That was my story, right? Like I'm an Albanian girl. I'm supposed to do like all these Albanian cultural, traditional things, but I'm very rootless. So I welcome people to check out Rootless, to learn, grow, network, and um, just try something different, you know? Take a leap of faith. You want to highlight um, what the roofing industry is about. What do you tell them? Well, I tell them, first of all, that the roofing industry is an industry that allows you freedom. I don't think you're boxed in. Maybe there's a time in your life when you want to do a little less and in roofing, you can do that. Maybe there's a time in your life where you want to work a little more in roofing, you can do that. I highlight the fact that you can grow as much as you want or you can stay smaller if that's what you like. There's great um, income to, to be made.